Websites have changed a lot over the past five years. And if you look back 10 years, they're almost unrecognizable. Some of your favorite websites looked completely different and a lot of them didn't even exist 10 years ago. So in this video, I'm gonna take you back to 2015 and show you what your favorite websites looked like and then we're going to compare those to what they look like today. I think you're gonna be surprised by what you see. The first website we're gonna talk about is Dropbox. And the old Dropbox website is honestly pretty bland. They played it pretty safe with their design choices, light gray and white backgrounds, very standard fonts, static images that don't really tell you anything specific. They don't really draw your attention. They've got a very standard left-right layout that just switches back and forth, image on the left, text on the right, text on the left, image on the right. Um, and that just continues on down until you get to the bottom of a very bland looking form. So the old Dropbox website really didn't blow me away. The new Dropbox website, they made some serious improvements. The thing I like probably the most is the custom font that they've used. This is actually a font exclusive to Dropbox. They use it throughout their entire site and it just looks really good. They've got strong calls to action throughout and the other big thing that they've done is they've added a lot of movement to their site. They've got videos, animations, uh, kind of moving illustrations that really just show you what Dropbox does rather than just having kind of like these boring, bland images that don't really tell any sort of story. Now, as we scroll down, um, they've got some custom icons here. I really love the style of these icons. They match their brand color. Um, they're kind of like this doodle style, which makes them feel unique. And then as you scroll down, we've got a few more images, even doing small things like putting real humans faces on there. It just makes it feel more inviting, more friendly, more real. And so even small adjustments like that can make a big difference. The next site that we're talking about is Stripe. And honestly, as far as old websites go, this old Stripe website is probably one of my favorites. I think this is a pretty timeless design. The layout's great. The imagery is great. I love their use of colors. There are only a few things that I think have changed quite a bit over the past years, and that is just getting a little bit more expressive with fonts, both font sizes, font weights. You can see that um, it's a lot of small, like thin fonts. And on the new website, we're going big and bold, shorter headers, really just pulling your attention to that main header. But other than that, Stripe did a great job on this old website. I love what they've done with the colors, the layouts. Um, they've got some good variation, right? So rather than just having that kind of flip-flopping two-column layout. They go to center align. They've got a tab component here. They've got a two-column. They've got a logo section. So uh, some really good variation there. And probably my favorite part about the old Stripe website, which they have kept on the new Stripe website, is these kind of angled sections. So on the new website, they kept that same style, but what they've done is they've got kind of like this moving gradient. It just feels really cool. It makes the, the website really feel like it's alive. And for a payment processor tool, I feel like that kind of um, angular layout, right? It almost looks like a chart. It looks like increase in finances. Like it, I think it really tells a story even with, with really basic design choices like that. So the other thing that I really like is they've got these four columns here in the middle that have these like kind of like gray dotted lines. It makes everything feel like it's in line. And then down here, we've got a, a really cool kind of illustration that bounces you between these icons and shows you what all uh, Stripe can do. And then as you scroll, that image is still going to stay on the right there and it's going to change as you continue to scroll down. So this new Stripe website is amazing. I certainly hope that they don't change this anytime soon. I think they did an awesome job with this. And even small things like changing the background color to kind of this darker blue, but still keeping their slanted angles, having like this uh, moving image in the background, um, really great job overall. This next one is probably my favorite of this video, and this is the old Webflow website. Now, this was early on when Webflow was just getting started. If you're not familiar with Webflow, this is a site builder tool. Um, this is actually what me and my team use. But this website is, is pretty bland, right? They've got like a very basic form, tested out. This seems like it was early enough in the, the life of Webflow that the tool really doesn't have a whole lot of features. It's kind of fun to see the old UI of the tool. 
And then as you scroll down, it's just like a lot of static, not really any moving images or animations. You've got like some very basic hover effects. And then coming down here, you've just got like some switching color backgrounds. It looks like Webflow hadn't really decided on a brand yet. So they just were throwing out a bunch of different colors. So this old Webflow website was really fun to go through because I really didn't like it. And it's funny for a web design tool to have a website that is this underwhelming. And Webflow's new website is just absolutely beautiful. And so I think they realize the importance of having their own website be just breathtaking uh, because that's what they do, right? They build websites. And so this new Webflow site is amazing. They've got just a lot of moving parts and pieces and it does a better job of really showing you what the tool actually does. Now, as we scroll down, this tab component is amazing. It's kind of got like this loader here that shows you when it's going to skip down to the next one and it changes the image or the video here on the right according to which tab you're on. So it just makes the site so much more engaging. It allows you to really explore the site rather than just reading text and seeing static bland images. So as we continue to scroll down, they've got a few different components here. And again, this variation is just so important. You never wanna have a website that has the same layout for every section all the way down through. So you want to throw in like a, you know, a centered single column and then maybe a two column tab component. And then down here, we've got this slider that has multiple clickable blocks. And then we go back to this center line. There are just so many things that you can do to make it feel like you're not just going through this routine, you know, same section every single time. So these sections are kind of fun. They've put these inside of a block, which just makes them feel a little bit more contained really again really great animation showing you how all of this works this webflow website is just amazing the next site is wise and this is a website that i use a lot and honestly their old website wasn't terrible considering this was clear back in 2015 honestly this site looks pretty good the only thing that i would say is it just feels like there's a lot going on right just looking here we've got multiple different calls to action, whether it's a video, you've got these two icons here, you've got like this currency calculator here on the right and another call to action to get started. So there's just a lot going on. With that said, the overall style is pretty solid. I love the colors, they use a lot of white space. These graphics aren't terrible. I think they, they do a fine job. Although it would be much better if there was actually a showcase of the tool or the software. They've got some pretty safe, like standard layouts, but they do have good variation. They've got a little movement down here, and then everything else is pretty standard. So not a bad website. Honestly, I think that uh, at the time, this probably was a pretty groundbreaking website. The new website is vastly different. And in fact, they completely rebranded. So they've got a custom font that is unique to Wise. Um, they updated the brand colors. And the website is really, really clean. They have like very minimal stuff here on the site. And I think that that's really important when you want to focus on the one thing that you do, and that is sending payments between countries. They really just focus on that and kind of cut all of the other fluff. Now, if you look at the old website, they just have so many different links and different feature pages and service pages and all this stuff. And this new website really is just pushing you to log in and start sending money now, which just focusing on a singular call to action is going to make a big difference on your conversion rates. The next website is HubSpot, and there are several things about this old HubSpot website that I do not like. The first thing right off the bat is this background image that's blurred. This isn't showing me anything. It's not making me want to do anything. If, if nothing else, it's just taking away from the header, subheader, and the calls to action. And as if that blurred image wasn't enough of a distraction, they have these calls to action that are opaque so you can see through them. So I don't know why they've put so much attention on this blurry image. Background images for the most part are, are not really in right now. And if you are going to have an image behind text, it has to be done really tastefully and there has to be really good contrast between the two. As we continue to scroll down, a lot of small headers, small text, and kind of weird things they've done. Like it goes to black and white here, and then I guess turns to color. 
just a lot of blurry images, a lot going on here. This is almost like a bento grid that they've used, but there's no spacing between it. So it's hard to tell what is clickable and like which text correlates uh, with which image. So that's enough bagging on HubSpot's old website because their new website is awesome. The first thing you'll notice is a really cool kind of custom font. This is a really unique font. I don't see things like this very often, but they're using bigger fonts, easier to read. They've got really bright colors for their calls to action. So if you just compare this to their old website, these buttons don't stand out at all. On the new website, you know exactly what you're supposed to click. There are these big orange buttons. The graphics that are used are really, really great. They just feel custom. They actually feel like you're looking at what HubSpot does rather than just some like blurry stock photos, right? As we continue to scroll down, they've got some good social proof. And then even this, like this is a pretty standard layout, but they have like these custom thumbnails that have the brand colors. They have some of these like brand icons and symbols. They're using their font. And then down here, they've got all of their custom icons. So all of this just feels like they spent a lot more time and thought and resources into designing out this site. And so this is kind of what I talked about here. So if we go back to the old one, they're just showing screenshots of like our blog and our training. But now what we're doing is we have these custom icons that uh, represent each of these individual pages, right? You've got your sales hub, your marketing hub, your service hub. And so um, this is something that Google does as well. Now it might be useful to have even like a different color for each of these, but having these unique icons that represent each different feature or service is, is really cool. The next website is Zoom. And this is another one that uses this background image. Really don't like what they're doing here. They've got this very thin text, which is difficult to read with this image in the background. And anytime you have to put like a dark mask or a dark color over the background, it's just detracting from the image and it really still doesn't help with your contrast or readability here. They've got kind of this small dinky looking form. Honestly, the call to action isn't horrible. Sign up free, it's orange, it's easy to see. But then we have like a bunch of tabs over here that are showing you like all the different features. So if I landed on this site, I wouldn't know what to do. There are multiple calls to action. We've got like this sliding tab hero that's showing us all sorts of different types of videos, the call to action changes. And then you've still got this other call to action down here, which is why Zoom. And so you're just asking the user to do too many things. So uh, the graphics, the imagery, not terrible, um, good use of color, but there's not really a whole lot on this homepage. Now the new Zoom homepage, they made some massive improvements. So bigger fonts, better use of color, better imagery, more movement. They still kind of got like this slider type feel on the hero that's showing different features but they're not giving you a dozen different calls to action. They still are inviting you to check uh, plans and pricing, and then you've got sign up free right up here. Now, as we scroll down, really good movement. They've got these tabs that float over to the left, and then they're clickable for a slider. Great imagery, great icons. We've got some good social proof here. Really cool images like this, again, that just they match the brand, that they don't feel so bland and boring got your icons here, which honestly, they probably could have done a better job with the icons, maybe matching brand color, making them feel a little bit more unique. Again, that's one thing that like Dropbox did on their icons. It just makes it feel like you actually made these specifically for your brand rather than just pull those off of like a generic icon site. Down here, I really like this slider. Great images for, I think these are blog articles, different reports, things like that. I love the different background colors, cool hover effects, and then just more social proof down here with a strong call to action. So big step up for Zoom, love their new website. The next one we'll look at is Shopify. Now Shopify is again, a tool that builds websites. If you're a tool that builds websites, your own website better be pretty amazing. Now this old website, I don't think it was terrible. I think there is a lot going on but they did a great job with imagery, brand colors, background colors, bigger, bolder fonts, using the colors in here to, to kind of highlight important details, a strong call to action. And then as you scroll down, like there's really nothing else. 
the new Shopify website has a lot more life. So I know I talked about not having background images. Here they're using a background video and it does feel like a lot, but somehow it works. And I think the biggest reason that it works is if you look over here where the text is, there's really never an important aspect or focal point of the video that happens behind these images. Most of it is over here in this open space, right? So you've got people here, you're gonna see faces over on this right side. And so it's not detracting and it almost looks like they have a little bit uh, like darker of a mask over here just to make sure that this is super readable. So honestly, I'm fine with them. I think they did a great job. Um, I do really like their massive navigation. This isn't always going to be necessary, but for tools like Shopify that just have like endless features and plugins and education, this is a really, really great way to, uh, to lay all those things out. And then you've also got your resources. So strong call to action. Honestly, I probably would have liked if they used a brand color for this call to action, but it seems like they're kind of going for that black and white feel. Down here, really good animations. You've got some movement here. You've got kind of like some data points that uh, just add validity to what you're doing. I really like the way they're highlighting important parts of their text with like this green, blue, purple gradient. A cool way to draw your attention without kind of breaking your, your brand colors. They've got good icons here. I'm actually a big fan. Anytime people break their icons for services, down into colors, it just helps you kind of keep things straight. And if I'm looking for enterprise, I know I'm looking for the green icon. And the hope is that when you click on that green icon, it's going to take you to a page that utilizes that green color. Now, as we scroll down again, you've got kind of like this tab component that switches and shows you what this, uh, what this tool does down at the bottom. We've got some more custom graphics. Got some different calls to action. And then as you click this, it's going to again take you through kind of a tab slider. And one thing that I like is even though these aren't, all of them aren't animated, they just kind of like move as they float in. And so you don't need to have, you know, like these custom animations. A lot of this can be done in a tool like Webflow or Framer where you just affect the way that the images load in. We've got more of these tab components here. And then down at the bottom, we've got this section, which I actually really like. Meet the people who chose Shopify. You've got all these different images, videos. It's just fun. It's inviting. All right, our last one is Airbnb. The old website is pretty bland. It feels old school. You've got the image or the video. I guess it's just an image until you click the play button, and then it's going to play that video. You've got a very kind of boring looking form here. That's one thing that I noticed with these is these older websites, they never customize the style of their forms. It's just like, okay, let's change the font of the text, the placeholder text, and then let's change the color of the button. And then like the new Airbnb website, it just like, it feels so nice. This form, like it's got these drop downs. You can select your dates. The search button kind of like pops up when you're ready. I mean, it's just so much better what they're doing right now. Um, going back to this old website, a lot going on with like these background images. It's hard to read the text. I, I just don't think that it ever works. The new website, they've got the images here. They've got the text down below. And there is so much that you can do on Airbnb's website. And I think my favorite part of this is how they have broken down the different types of rentals by these icons. And these are probably my favorite icons I find on any site. They're just, they're unique, but they're so simple national parks you've got just like the most simplistic looking tree tree houses tiny homes and then that's just going to filter what you're looking for and then again you've just got these beautiful images so airbnb's new website love it looks great you can learn a lot from what airbnb is doing right now so i'd like to know which of these websites is your favorite so comment it down below thanks so much for watching this video if you like this type of content websites marketing be sure to subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video